my channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about some reading stats of mine from 2019. A lot of people have been doing these videos, and I asked over on Twitter if anyone would be interested in seeing this from me, and I apparently people were interested in seeing it from me. So let's get started. I guess the first and but possibly biggest stat to talk about is what I read in the year of 2019 and the breakdown for it. I ended up reading 346 things in the year of 2019 and 37.9% of those were standalones, 50.9% were series, and 11.3 of them were graphic novels, manga, or comics. I typically lump them together but to make this chart I decided to just call it graphics and, and make it be done. Um, I do later on break down uh, in the subcategories uh, for arcs and not um, but I decided to for this one to see what my series were and what my standalones were even if they were a reread. I'm not surprised that series is bigger than standalone due to the fact of my always wanting to read 12 series goal and the fact that I got into a lot of standalone series this year and each of those they might be individual books however I always rank them as series because they do have overarching like character arcs that are prevalent in other books and you can see how those characters interact with each other and so I always put them as series so I see how a series is winning in this one so I definitely am not surprised by this stat at all. I guess a good stat to explain this one would be my month breakdown. In the month of January I read 25 books this comes as no surprise to me due to the fact that I don't read the last two weeks of December and and therefore I will read a lot in the month of January. Uh, February uh, I read 32 books. That comes as no surprise to me because I participated in a month-long readathon and I when I participate in those I don't double up on challenges even if they don't even if they allow you to double up on challenges. I am a free person who if a readathon does not allow you to double up on challenges I don't double up on challenges and I still want to complete them all if a readathon allows you to. Still gonna let them let it happen and I participated in a readathon in February and that's how I got to 32. March I read 31. April I read 27. I think I got really sick. I think I had an ear infection in April and those typically screw with me. Uh, May I read 10. May is my birth month and it is also the month we went to BookCon which comes as no surprise to me. I think I had switched jobs for a little bit in the month of May. So again that comes as no surprise to me. June I read 20 books back on my grind. July I read 29. August I read 52. This is during this one is definitely due to the Owl's Magical Readathon and me coming back to I do not double up on readathon challenges and I wanted to read a book for every Owl's Magical Readathon prompt that there was and I did. I read a book for every possible prompt for every possible like career you could have potentially had and I could have had any career that I wanted for the Owl's Magical Readathon in the month of August and I had a couple of books that I had to read for something else uh, because I was doing the Disneyathon. So I read 52 books in the month of August and it was the worst wrap up I've ever had to film but I read 52 books. It was what it was and that's kind of how I am as a reader. Uh, next <laughs> I read 25 books in September. October I read 46. This is no surprise to me because of all of the Halloween-esque reading and I fell in love with the Nocturne Falls series in October. There was also a Dewey's 24-hour readathon in October and I read 12 books during that. Uh, in November there was 28 books and December 21 which again comes as no surprise to me due to the fact that I do not read the last two weeks of December. I guess a good place to go from my month breakdown is to my format breakdown. I read 36.7% audiobooks last year which comes as no surprise to me. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. This is possibly because I have I definitely have an audible subscription at, with the escape package. I have a, two different library systems that are near me that I can listen to audiobooks through and I'm very grateful for the privilege that I have to be able to do that and I listen to audiobooks on a higher speed because it's just what I can do. If I'm doing something and it, I think I can also do an audiobook with it 
I'm going to be listening to an audiobook with it. I'm not really a movie or a TV person. I'm more of an audiobook and do the thing. Um, a lot of video games if that I'm playing, if I can listen to an audiobook with it, I'm going to listen to an audiobook with it. I might actually do a video later this year of video games that go well with audiobooks just because I've been like thinking about that for a really long time. My second highest percentage was physical books. Uh, this is 30.9. Uh, this is not all of the graphic novels because I did read a couple on ebook uh, and I definitely read more physical books because that had been something I was noticing I had been reading less of as the years had been going on because I had been favoring more ebooks which I read 17.3% in which seems like a less number because of the fact I've read 15% arcs. However, almost all of my arcs minus the ones that I got at BookCon uh, had been ER. So I read pretty spread out, if that makes sense. Um, I definitely know that I read a lot of audiobooks and next we should talk about my rating breakdown and then we'll talk about my genre breakdown because that one's scaring them at you the most. Um, I definitely, when I said I went and re-rated everything during my rating crisis and deciding to use one stars. Um, I re went and re-rated a couple of books, which brought me to 15 one stars for the year. I had 39 two stars, 107 three stars, 144 stars, and 45 five stars. I definitely am glad that I had five stars. I'm trying to be more selective with my five stars because I felt that I was just kind of giving them out willy-nilly um, and I feel like I'm being more selective with them this year but I also feel like I'm not reading as many in general. So that brings me to my genre breakdown. I don't have a romance wedge on my pie. I feel like romance is like the second category for my like pie wedges and if I was to do like a secondary category a lot of these would be romance because romance would technically be this whole pie for a lot of these things. That being said I have a pretty hefty pie. So let's get started. My pie, it's 24.6% contemporary. This comes as no surprise to me because I read a lot of books for contemporary thon. Uh, I did a couple of rounds of smut-a-thon, um, a couple of read-a-thons just worked out. So I read a lot of contemporary books this year. Next was Paranormal with 23.1%. Uh, it was kind of a fun game where it was back and forth between contemporary and paranormal for a lot of the year on which one was winning my uh, books by John Rupp High. Um, I, and this again comes as no surprise to me because I fell back in love with paranormal books this year. High between fantasy and thrillers with 11.3% each. I read less fantasy this year and less thrillers this year because I just was reading less big books and less fantasy series and I just kind of have been burnt down on thrillers and I was reading a lot of like dull thrillers for me at the beginning so I was reading less of them throughout the year. Next was nonfiction which was 7.2% which is no surprise to me because I participated in nonfiction November and I had my nonfiction book project where I wanted to read a nonfiction book each month and this ended up 7.2% is equivalent to 25 books and I'm happy with that. That is more than one book a month. That is over two books a month. I'm happy with it. Next is comic books, which I read 6.1% in. Um, what I define as comic books is typically trade paperback. Then is graphic novels, which is 3.5%. Graphic novels to me are the single issue ones that are just one story all together or the hefty like two part ones, like the Alice Ozen one. Then it's retelling, which is 3.2%. This doesn't surprise me. Retellings are less common than they used to be. And it is science fiction with 2.9%. This does not surprise me because I am doing a science fiction project this year um, because I did not read a lot of science fiction books last year because science fiction scares me. And a lot of science fiction books I did read last year were science fiction romance books or science fiction books that were dystopian utopian because those are my comfort zones with science fiction. So that was why science fiction is such a small category. Next is historical, which is 2.3%. This doesn't come as any surprise to me either because of the fact that a lot of the historical books I have on my TBR will probably take a lot longer of time. Um, and I definitely want to get to them eventually. It's just last year I had put so much effort into readathons and I need to do that less, which is why I'm actively trying to do that less. Then it was 1.7% manga and like who am I if I only read 1.7% manga because I normally read so much manga and I honestly think this was like me actively trying to read less manga because I normally have like this much manga read 
this many regular books read and I think it was just me trying to actively not have an, a 50% manga chart like honestly then with 1.2% with what's myth ish books which is mythology based books um, these could obviously go in like a different category a lot of these ones are uh, books that have a very large base in their story in mythology um, this is a lot of the Rick Riordan presents line as well as Rick Riordan's books himself um, but there's obviously other books that fall on this category if I read four of them and I didn't say I read all of Rick Riordan's books this year and my lowest categories of the year I have a two-way tie um, between non-chapter so anthology uh, short story collections etc and classics I read three of each of those and it was 9.9 percent does not come as any surprise to me that those were my shortest in my entire list uh, because I don't read as many anthology short story collections um, as I used to. Um, but I basically call this section non-chapter because they are books that are not set in chapters. So those are all the stats that I had to talk to you about today from 2019. I will leave Ali from Hardback Quarter in my description bar down below's spreadsheet. She did the spreadsheet that I used for last year. She did the one that I used for this year. She also did my intro and my outro. If you're interested in a spreadsheet, I definitely recommend checking hers out. Um, but I know that there are a couple other like spreadsheet options out there. With all that being said, were you surprised by any of the stats that I shared with you today? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like what you saw here today, be sure to like and subscribe. I normally post videos on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.